Okay, guys, so let's go and uh, talk a little bit also. I, we talked about the risk and why the cybersecurity risk uh, is really increasing, okay? And I, talk, I told you this is the survey came, uh, came just from the World Economic Forum. So this is where they look at the risk uh, and the forecast for uh, the entire economy, for the entire whole world. And as you can see, the cybersecurity is one of the top list. So that means, inshallah, if you work in cybersecurity, there is a guaranteed job, okay? Because a lot of companies, they can see how risk is gonna, how especially cybersecurity risk is gonna impact them. And they wanted someone to reduce this risk. So this is a good news for us. Okay. And again, and again, I keep telling you, how can we really do cybersecurity, okay? We are still brand new out of college, fresh. Uh, I would say uh, really fresh from out of college. I know that we have been months in this uh, in this course right now, so we are not really 100% fresh. But again, I would say when you really wanted to implement cybersecurity and within an organization, don't invent the wheel. The wheel already has been invented long time ago. You can just learn how the expertise are handling cybersecurity Okay, and you learn from them. And that's why we always get the NIST cybersecurity framework, or maybe if you don't really like NIST, it doesn't make really sense for you. There's so many standards out there for how to handle cybersecurity. There is ISO, there is COVID. Uh, so there is so many uh, standards, okay? Whatever standards you feel it is really uh, matching uh, your mentality and easy to grasp, you need to implement. Why? Because this standard is developed by so many expertise. Okay, they sit together and they said, okay, you know what, how to handle the risk of cybersecurity within an organization. And they come up with this nice standard that consists of five uh, core functions. That's identification, protection, and then detection, responding, and recovery, okay? And we have already covered, I think, in the last maybe four or five weeks, most of these areas, okay? We talked about the detections in a very deep details uh, for the entire last weeks. Uh, so week number five and week number six, we were talking about how detection is a very important function within the organization, because basically we cannot have 100% protection. We cannot have 100% prevention controls. We have users working from home. We have new technology emerging, okay? We have new threats, which is really well-funded and they are really resistant and they are really uh, have the skills to penetrate the most, you know, uh, preventive controls. Okay, so how can we really, uh, how can we really mitigate the risk of these kind of new technologies? And we don't have 100% preventive controls, and we have new threats like ABTs and nation states. Is basically by having exactly we cannot have it 100%, especially in prevention. We cannot have it 100%. We can, we can strive to make it 90 or 95% or even 97, but there will still be a small percentage that the attacker will manage to really get into your network and cause a lot of damage. So this is why we needed the detection techniques and we explain in so many lectures, the detection techniques are divided to two uh, areas. Some of these areas we call it reactive, okay? And some of them are uh, proactive and the reactive basically is the, uh, the, that when you have an incident, you respond to this incident, okay? So you really need to have an alert jumping in your face, okay, according to uh, alert system to start to do something about it. So the detection techniques over here, guys, is basically divided to two big areas. The big area is incident hand, uh, sorry, uh, detections, the uh, reactive techniques and proactive techniques. So do you guys remember uh, what is proactive techniques again? and why we need proactive techniques. This is the $5 question. I will not say million dollars question because I don't have currently a million dollars with me. Okay. Exactly, for threat hunting. So proactive techniques is for threat hunting. Why we need threat hunting, Naif? This is a really, uh, this is really the, the answer here. 
proactive technique is through threat hunting. So we are not waiting for uh, something maliciously to happen or we get an alert like reactive technique. We are going and after the threats. Why we need threats hunting guys? Because we, know, we, we mentioned that there is some new uh, threats, which is, we called it ABT. They are really sneaky and there is no, no uh, uh, breeds of malwares. It's not easy to detect. So we really need someone to go out there and have a hypothesis that I'm compromised and then look for an evidence that has been compromised. Why? Because usually ABT groups are really, really, uh, uh, really, really doesn't make a lot of traces. So you really need to look and for these specific traces and do your own analysis and come up with a conclusion whether we are compromised of one of these groups or no. Okay, and don't think, okay, you know, my organization is away from uh, uh, these ABT groups. Especially in Saudi Arabia Now you are really taking like um, uh, what we mentioned before and this uh, war uh, lord, a Chinese warlord, which is uh, called uh, 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 Zhu, which is basically he said that, okay, in order really uh, to, uh, to win a battle of uh, a real battle, you need to understand your uh, opponent, your revealer or your uh, enemies, and you need to understand yourself. So in order to un understand the enemy, assume that you are facing the most advanced enemy out there. You need to understand their capabilities. You need to understand your tact the tactics, their procedures, and techniques. And that's why MITRE ATTACKS is really good uh, framework that can really help you to understand, OK, how this EDT works. So I need to understand their tax tactics. OK, how the what techniques they are using to really infiltrate systems. And then you need to look at the procedures, how to step by step they are doing this. Only then you will be able to build your defenses to stop these bad guys, okay? And that's why MITRE attacks I mentioned so many times, it's really, in, uh, 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 it's really uh, interesting uh, website that can teach you a lot, a lot about the attacks and how the uh, uh, threat actors they think and how they penetrate systems. Okay, so for example, I just give you an example. So if we are really worried about the Iranian guys or the nation state Iranian guys, ABT-15, okay? So let me see what is the ABT-15 is capable to do, okay? And I will go through what their methodology, what they do and uh, what kind of uh, procedures they do. And I start to build my defenses against these uh, guys, okay? Uh, also, they are targeting, uh, the same is saying target a power of Saudi Arabia economy, exactly. So they are, Really, you can see it's an attack, but again, if you are attacking Aramco, which is the biggest uh, source of income to Saudi Arabia, then they are not only attacking a company, they're attacking the whole nation. They're attacking the whole economy, okay? Because Aramco is not working, means uh, losses to the economy, means no uh, new project in Saudi Arabia, no means salaries, okay? So because you are uh, an oil and gas uh, based economy. So you really need to understand uh, the, 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 I would say the impact, okay? Don't look at this, oh, this is only Aramco. No, they are really targeting the whole, uh, the whole economy because basically uh, Aramco is 98% owned by the uh, Saudi government, okay? So I'm just trying to link things together, guys, so you understand the big picture. Okay, great. We talked about detection for the last two weeks. And we talked also in a uh, long time, I would say back, we talked about response, not in deep details because we had no really uh, idea about what we are responding to. We said we have an incident, so we really need to uh, respond. We really need to implement incident response. So we really, to, today we're taking it a bit uh, further 
and we will talk about incident response in uh, in a more deep uh, technical technological way. Uh, so this is will be the, our topic today. But again, uh, what I wanted to also mention here, guys, detection techniques now is a must. Okay, and this is where you can see a lot of investments right now, especially in the IT security realm, is gonna uh, be redirected. And that's why you see a lot of jobs also opening up for a stock engineer and for threat hunters and for incident response. So this is really important to really look at this because this is could be your entry level for the cybersecurity uh, jobs. And that's why I would highly recommend it that you finish after we finish here, you do your cyber as a security plus certification and you do see why SA plus certification because this is what will allow you to really get a, a job as a SOC. Uh, and uh, I mentioned SOC is a great opportunity right now and there is so many jobs you can tell the, you can tell about this if just if you just go and check LinkedIn. Okay. So we talked about detection in the last few days and I give you guys yesterday a walkthrough what will happen in order to really detect if there is some uh, malicious attacks happening, okay? And in order to really detect if something malicious happening, I need really some logs, okay? Uh, and we, we talked about how we get this logs before. And again, I emphasize that logs should come from all entire, from every single point of your network every single point of your systems, every single point application that's working from all the users and from the all admin. Why? Because I wanted to have the great picture. So our IT system is consisting from network, okay, from systems, operating systems, I would say OS here to just uh, uh, um, say that the operating system from application, okay, okay. And also from who is accessing our data. So data comes in the layer of, of, of application. So this is another also an area that we really need, need to look at. We also, so we collect network uh, logs. We collect operating system logs where with all the uh, variation of uh, operating system logs with a system security application. We look at the application logs, your database logs, your web application logs, your mail server logs. This is also an, another important aspect. We look at the data access, who would access the data, the data is encrypted or no. So this is also logs that we should get all uh, from. We look also at the logs coming from our endpoint protections, because this is will allow us to see if the machine has been impacted by a virus or maybe the quarantine assembled uh, file that we, they don't know if it's harmful or no. So this kind of logs will give you an indication, you also get the data uh, feeds from your routers, switches, firewall, IPS and IDSs. We have seen that uh, from uh, proxy servers, we have seen how proxy server yesterday highlighted to us that some uh, users are really uh, looking into website, which is really seems malicious, okay? So this kind of things, guys, will allow us uh, we also, yesterday we talked about the DNS logs is important also to understand what kind of, uh, what, what kind of resol uh, resolution that your uh, uh, client are trying to uh, reach the DNS and ask the DNS questions. So all this kind of logs is important. We collect these logs, okay? We cannot leave these logs in one machine and then jump between machine to machine to look into these logs because this is, will not be an efficient way and it will take a lot of manpower and then we'll still have no big pictures, okay? So we mentioned that we have already a, uh, a system called SIM, okay? And the SIM is basically uh, uh, a solution that exists right now in the market and it's gaining a lot of momentum, especially in the last 10 years, okay? With SIM collecting all these logs, you know, and the SIM will start to aggregate these logs and then it starts to normalize, normalize the, the basically the logs to be in a certain format. And then it will start to correlate between logs to create cases and to send you an alert if some case is happening. And then finally to store these logs in and index these logs in one storage. So it's easy for you to search and find anomalies within these logs. 
And this is what will give you the full picture about the network. And we seen yesterday that we have already some logs from your uh, firewall, some logs from the web proxy, some logs from the machine bucket capture itself. It allow you uh, to, to really study what happened in the network, and maybe take, take a sample of the mis uh, malware and start to analyze it later on. Okay, guys? So far, so good. Any questions? Okay, so I see like a lot of you guys, alhamdulillah, they understand uh, if the Sam saying yes, Asai saying okay, everything looks okay also. That's good. Uh, so we, uh, after we looking at uh, these logs guys, and uh, we have uh, already defined, uh, we need to really define if we have an, a really incident or no. Okay, and this is what I told you before, that uh, you really need to have the trained SOC engineer that we can really uh, distinguish between events and incidents because event is any uh, any observer thing or any observer logs coming from your system, it's called event. So for example, if you someone log into his machine, that's an event, okay? If someone uh, restarted his computer, this is an event, okay? But if someone logged to his machine right now, and then one hour later he logged from a completely different country, okay, then we have the Superman theory that we talked about it before. The Superman theory means you cannot have one person ex exactly in two places. So this is not an event of logging anymore. This is basically an event and an incident because you are you need and you need to investigate it. Okay, guys. So you need to really distinguish by this. I have already given you an example before. Someone is trying to access uh, a certain files within a, a directory, okay? And I said, what is the difference between, uh, and he was trying to access files in Apache, while the organization have an IIS. So I said, this is also not an incident because with a small look, okay, he's trying to access this file and your server saying it doesn't exist. Okay, this is not an incident and you really need do no in further investigation because basically he is targeting uh, some something else. So um, so this is not an incident. This is just another event. So you really need uh, someone in your network as a SOC engineer who really understand the assets and what kind of technology you are using within the organization or the corporate environment. Okay. So again, this is very important. And this is again uh, when you are doing an incident handling or incident response, you need to be calm, okay? You don't need to be rushed. You need to take a decision without, uh, you know, informing everyone. Uh, because why? Because basically, uh, if you do a rush decision, you can really uh, destroy the evidence, okay? And destroy the incidents or even alert the attackers that you are into him in the incident. So you really need to be calm take a proper action. So for example, if I I know an incident, a malware happening in one machine, if I go to this machine, okay, and I know the attacker is on this machine already, خلاص. okay, if I go to this machine and I started to run net state, you know, if I started to run ping commands, I start to trace route, I will start to, you know, do something in the computer, the attacker already monitoring the, this computer. So now I'm telling the, the attackers, I'm here, I can see you, okay? And now the attacker will try to buffet his attacks to somewhere else, okay? So you do really need to really alarm, uh, alarm the attackers about what's happening. And that's why when we were talking about how to gather uh, the processes within uh, one computer, okay? I told you guys, <clears throat> you need to run this over the network. <clears throat> Okay, so you really need to run this commands over the network. So for example, this is a machine that I know it's been uh, compromised or been attacked. Okay, so this is a machine being attacked, I'll give it X, okay. I will not go and here and sit over here and start to, to grab uh, processes, service, network states, no. I can do it from my remote location. If I wanted to see all the connection coming from these machines, I can say, you know what? Let my IDS get all this, uh, you know, network traffic. Or let me uh, watch my firewall and get all this network traffic. Okay, I can run a command here 
that will run remotely in this machine and get me all these processes running here without be sitting physically on the machine and doing the stuff. So this is important. Why? Because you don't want to tell the attacker, I'm here, so the attacker will pop it or move to another machine. Okay, so this is important when you handle any incident to be calm and to be really wise about your, uh, your, your move so you don't destroy the evidence. Another, uh, if, if, uh, another thing that I have seen before, that's when people are really, uh, uh, their computer being hacked. <laughs> okay, I'll do it, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, in, order, in order to do this attack, guys, uh, sorry, in order not to destroy the evidence, make sure that you follow the, also the digital forensics process that we talked about yesterday. The digital forensic process in a very simple uh, mean, guys, is just you need to really extract the most volatile data first, okay? If you don't do this, you will lose the most uh, uh, volatile data, and that is uh, very precious data. You cannot really have it again, especially if you start. I see in people in the situation when uh, they are really panicked that the computer under attack, they took the bar off, or maybe they restarted their computer. They think this is will, you know, will stop the attack. Yes, it will stop the attack, but it also will destroy the evidence. Okay, so you really cannot really see what happened in this computer at that time. So that's why it's another thing that we really uh, need to understand that incident happens and we really need to be wise and calm when we handle the evidence or we responding to our evidence, okay? Uh, okay, so we said this, uh, so what kind of incidents we can see? There is a malware, there's botnets, there's exploit kits. We'll talk about exploit kits later on, inshallah, uh, in two weeks when we start to talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, ethical hacking, inshallah, in this course. Ransom attacks happening, denial of service, distributed denial of service. Uh, you know, you have hacktivism like anonymous, you have zero days vulnerabilities, you have web defacement or like uh, someone uh, change it, your web. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. The group of kids, right? No, they are not kids. This one is uh, they're not kids. They can make a, if they are. Look, look, there is two theory about who is uh, anonymous. Uh, okay, they mention uh, this is a group of attackers from everywhere in the world, and they have the political agenda. Okay, to really, uh, I would say, uh, punish the governments that they are uh, doing, uh, okay, uh, malicious stuff. So, um, so this is what is hacktivism is all about, is okay. I see, for example, a conflict between Israel and uh, Palestine, okay? Uh, so if I see this conflict happening, and I know for sure that, uh, you know, the Israeli are crazy and they are killing people left and right without no uh, rights, uh, so the, uh, the, the, I will attack the Israeli uh, government website. I will take them down. Okay, I will punish the government and somehow. And they have done this in so many cases. So this is a good thing, I would say. Okay, but then the way to really do it, okay, is not the proper way. It should coming from you know from uh, from the world uh, uh, country leaders. Uh, it's not gonna be coming from a group of hackers, but unfortunately, we live in unfair world, so uh, we we see a lot of unfairness uh, right now. So anyway, I'm not gonna go to political uh, disputes, but I'm again, hacktivism is as hacking for agenda, and they have their own agenda. But sometimes I feel like they are being uh, be, being part of also a government. Okay, so uh, because they are sometimes they got involved. And some cases they don't get involved even if there's a conflict. So why we don't see, for example, anonymous right now are attacking Russia, okay? Even though there is a big, uh, you know, uh, big conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Okay, let's see the Russian is the aggression, aggression. They done the first aggression. So why they not attacking Russia? Okay, maybe the uh, Ukrainian, yeah, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying they are, a little bit bias, bias. Bias means they're taking sides. So how come they're taking sides if you are working as the groups who see the real truth and support the, the rights of people? Okay, why don't you take a side in this conflict? Why, okay, let's say 
the Ukrainian the, the, the are the crazy. Let's assume this, okay? So why they didn't uh, uh, you know attack Ukraine? Okay, so this is kind of question that comes to my mind, and I feel sometimes you are not hundred uh, percent, you know, the the most uh, fair guys in the world. So it's just just just, just an, a, 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 like an idea, okay? But again, so the whole idea here, guys, that we eventually will have an incident. And again, if you guys remember the 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 quote I have yesterday from the FBI, okay, they there is a company that they, they know they are hacked, okay, there is a, and another company, they don't know they are being hacked. So you, there is a breach will happen uh, eventually, whether you know about it or whether you don't know about it, it will happen, okay? So better you get really, uh, uh, really uh, uh, a better response if this is happened. And that is the whole idea here behind incident response. So the breach is happening, is gonna happen eventually, okay? So better we are really getting ready and really have all the tools to respond and we are prepared for it, okay? If you have a good plan, exactly, you will implement this plan, a plan in, in a very uh, professional way and you will, uh, you will be able to uh, minimize the damage of the incidents. So for example, if I'm worried about, uh, for, for example, if I'm worried about flooding, Okay, or if I'm worried about denial of service attacks, <coughs> I will do something about it. Okay, guys. So uh, I will prepare my, you know, my contacts. I can call. I have my the number of uh, maybe the air service provider that I can tell him that I'm under uh, I'm under attack now right now. Help me. I maybe I will put my website in a different geographical location. So if one if the area is attacked, the other area is not attacked, and then I can redirect my user to this other area, which is not attacked called this SDN network. Maybe if I know this is will happen anyway, maybe I will implement a load balancer so it can load the balance between 10 or 15 servers all around the group, so it will not really impact me uh, in the same way if I have only one server. So this is all, guys, is uh, 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 incident response procedures that you really need to uh, implement uh, when the attacks really takes place. Okay, so we talked about what is the difference between event and attack and, and, and incident, and we have explained most of them with examples. So there is no need to keep talking about this event and incidents. Okay, and but then I just got to you guys a couple of quotes uh, about what is incident is from uh, ITITL which is a very well a big organization when it comes to certification in IT world and becoming a manager in IT. And also I got the definition also from an incident when it comes to ISO 27. We have already talked about what is the incident definition when it comes to uh, NIST. So let's look at these, both of them, and both of them are very close to each other, okay? It's uh, incident uh, is, uh, is defined as any event which is not part of the standard operation of a service and which causes or may cause an interruption to or a reduction in the quality of this service. So anything that can really interrupt my service or any event that can interrupt my service, remember when we talked about NIST uh, definition for incident, that's anything that can cause potentially harm to our confidentiality, integrity, availability. It's very, it's very close to this, okay? Very close to this meaning. Okay, so the incident here is in any event that is really can impact our day-to-day -day operation and can cause a disruption. So this is the definition. So the day-to-day -day operation, I have a website. I have clients coming to this website. I have these clients are buying stuff, you know, uh, getting stuff uh, checked out, and then this stuff is shipped to them. So this is, this is the day-to-day -day operation. If I have a denial of service attack, then my user cannot reach my server this is means this is a disruption for a standard operation. And that's basically an incident, okay? So this is one of, one of the examples. Okay, if we look at the ISO over here, guys, this is the ISO definition, any event which is not part of standard operation of a service and which cause or may cause an interruption or reduction in the quality of the service. So the, basically the, uh, the incident, uh, uh, incident, uh, Incident definition in, uh, uh, for ITL and for also the ISO 27 is almost 
uh, is almost the same definition. And again, you know, the day-to-day -day operation for me is to sit in his in my computer as a, a sales team accessing a certain application. And I'm I'm really uh, waiting for this application to create to generate a report about my sales. Okay, but if my computer does have a malware and this malware causes the computer to start multiple times or started to really uh, react uh, very weird on my computer and started to steal my data, this is not part of the standard operation, and this is causes a disruption to my day-to-day -day business. This is also considered a business. So whether you consider the NIST. Uh, uh, incident definition or the ISO 27 uh, definition, it's it's good, okay? Why I'm keeping emphasizing on this? Because basically you can be in the interview and they will ask you what is the difference between an incident and an event. So you should be able to really, uh, uh, first of all, to define what is event and to define what is incident and give them a real uh, example of an incident so everyone understand that you Really understand the whole topic. Okay, guys. Uh, so when incident happens, okay, it's um, it can impact or may affect your organization, your customer. Okay. Uh, so why we need to manage the incident is basically we must be uh, able to manage uh, the incident in order to limit the damage. So this is most important thing. If I have denial of service attack, guys, that's lasted. For two, three hours, that means I am out of business for three hours. Okay, so I wanted to really limit the, uh, the damage. So if I can really make this three hours to half an hour or maybe 15 minutes or even maybe five minutes, this is much better than three hours out of time. Okay, you need to implement to recover and uh, uh, find a batch or fix what is what the issue is. Okay, so in order not to happen again in the future, and that's what we called about the incident, post incident response. Okay. Prevent occurrence, okay, and prevent further abuse uh, for this service. So we we mentioned this already, okay. And this is also, uh, you know, uh, the same exact meaning, okay. We have an incident. Why we need an incident response? Why we need someone to really find rectify the issue really quickly? Again, for multiple reasons. First of all, maintain continuous operation means once I just uh, respond to an incident in an efficient way and an effective way. I can maintain the disruption of my operation so I can go back to business and I can store, uh, store, uh, you know, reduce again. So imagine if I have, for example, an oil pipes and someone has managed to control the SCADA system that really manage this whole oil, oil pipe so that no one can see the data uh, and we have to shut down this oil pipes. Okay, so I really wanted to do an incident response quickly so I can limit the damage of uh, not operating this pipeline. This is another example. It uh, also uh, mitigate revenue. So if my pipeline is not doing the jobs, I'm really losing it, uh, revenue. So I really need to go back to work in order to get uh, uh, back my like my revenue back. Respond with the speed and agility. Uh, here means that uh, you really need to be uh, prepared for the incidents and have all the tools to respond quickly and uh, with agility. So you have multiple uh, solutions to solve the issues, maintain uh, uh, continuous operation we have already mentioned, mitigate uh, revenue loss. So this is uh, also something, mitigate fines, because sometimes if you are under attacks and the attacker manage uh, to steal uh, end customers data, they can really go and start, uh, you know, start uh, uh, or uh, sorry, start low uh, cases against you because you didn't protect their data. And the, sometimes also the government itself will give you fines. In so many cases we have seen about uh, if you have a single data breach in UK specifically, you will get up 1 million uh, you know, uh, bound uh, fine. So it's important also to avoid fines if, the, uh, if, you, if, you, if you are able to respond quickly and uh, in an agile way. Uh, so this is also uh, um, uh, will, will, will mitigate a lot of these fines and lawsuits. Okay, guys, so this is why we need to do incident response. Okay, what are the steps of incident response? Okay, the, so the steps for incident response is um, uh, six uh, stages incident response. Okay, you in, in some books, you can find them five 
and some books you can find six. So they are uh, anyway in NIST publication they are five. Okay, but five or six they are doing the same exact stage, and we really need to. I would not say memorize because memorize is a really bad word. I don't like to say memorize, but I would like to say that you really need to understand, and you really need to be able. Uh, Uh, okay, so Saha is here, guys. Uh, she needs to talk to you guys. So I will mute myself and I'll give the stage to Saha. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shadi. Thank you, Mr. Shadi. Wa alaikum salam. Malish, I'm going to be buzzed the recording. Is that possible, Yanni? Hi, Sahar. Are you here, Sahar? Yeah. Okay, uh, so you wanted to, uh, okay. Uh, you wanted to I talk know. to the students? Yes, I want to talk to students, but um I don't want uh, that to be recorded, so could you oh, okay. just so pause the recording? Okay, I'll pause the recording. Uh, I 